Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for who you are and what you've done. God, I've just been sharing for what I really believe you put on my heart. And I'm asking you to let everyone that's here have a moment like I had a few minutes ago when I knew that I knew that I felt you. Let them know that we serve a God who can be felt, talked to, and heard from. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we're in a series here that I argued with God quite a bit about. It's called Supernatural. And uh, in this series, we've been talking about things that people kind of find uh, strange about our faith. And so we've talked about different miracles. We've talked about uh, some angels. And so today we're going to end up in the strangest place of all, as it were, about our faith. Now, there are a lot of things about that Bible that you're fixing to read that are supernatural. The fact that the Bible exists is supernatural. That that many people over that many years could be led by the presence of God and, and be inspired, the Bible says, by the Spirit of God. And to do that, it, it's, it's unbelievable. But there's stories in there that just don't line up with the natural world. For instance, that in one, one night or one, one, one moment almost, as it were, uh, that um, a, a whole ocean or a whole sea could be dried up and someone could part through the middle of it. I mean, that's, that's supernatural. That's hard to believe. I remember one time somebody told me that they had this unbelievable lake that had been there like 40 years, and it was full of these monster bass, and I was going to show up, and, and I was going to catch them out of the little ponds, there, little puddles they were in. I mean, I could see them out there splashing around in the puddles, and I was like, man, this is like getting fish out of a barrel almost. You know, it was going to be easy, but there was a problem. It had been dry for a week and a half, but about five steps into it, I realized that it was going to be much more difficult because I couldn't get out there because a week and a half later, after 50 years of saturation, it was still soaked underneath, and I was sinking into the mud watching how that was happening. I thought, how in the world did God cause a sea to part and people to be able to walk across, not only walk across, but walk across in dry land? That's supernatural. When we start talking about a God who created a great fish that swallowed Jonah and, and carried him uh, and spit him out of, uh, near Nineveh, when God did that, that's, I mean, that's just mind-boggling. And so we, we have science, we have reason, we have all these things, and then we have the Word of God because we believe that a God who exists outside of the natural brings His superpower into our natural, and we have supernatural encounters with God. Can I get an amen for that today? We believe in a God who can change your life completely. We believe in a God who can revolutionize everything about you. And today I want to talk to you about the most supernatural part of what we say. Now imagine for a moment, if you were, to bring someone who's never heard of church, never been in church before, they're not from the Bible Belt, so they don't have a clue, and if you bring them in and you sit them down in a service and you start saying, well, if we're real lucky, it'll be a... Holy Ghost Day. How many you know what I'm talking about? All right. <laughs> when I was a kid, that meant service went twice as long and nobody preached, okay? <laughs> but it'll be a Holy Ghost Day. Or somebody will come in and go, Whoo! We had revival and I felt the Spirit. <laughs> what would happen if you were in a dark alley and somebody said, I feel a spirit in here? <laughs> You'd be leaving the alley, right? You'd be leaving that place because people don't understand what we're talking about. And, and we've got to be willing to talk about th uh, things that make people uncomfortable because here's the problem. We cannot bring a supernatural God and tie him up in a bunch of natural bows just so it doesn't freak the world out. The world needs to have an encounter with a God they can touch, they can feel, they can hear. They need a move of the Holy Spirit in their life. I'm just going to say what God just dropped into my heart. You've been trying long enough to fix yourself. Why don't you let God run into your life and let God straighten you out and let the Holy Spirit change who you are? Amen. Amen. All right, so here we are. We're in Acts chapter 1, verse number 12. If you open your Bibles there, Acts chapter 1, verse number 12. And this is, let me just set the scene for you. 
the, the Bible says that Jesus has ascended in front of them, and before he ascended, he told them, now I want you to go, and I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to tarry there. I want you to wait there. Go get together in that place where we go, and when you get there, I want you to stay until you have received the promise of the Holy Spirit. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, where Jesus had said this, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, notice this, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Then, after they get to this upper room where they've been, stay, where they've been staying, these all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer and supplication. They've all gone to where God told them to go, and they're trying their best to do what God has told them to do, to stay faithful until they have an encounter with God that changes everything about their lives. Now look, I don't know if you know it or not, but you have the same promise they have. You have the ability to get into the presence of God and to feel Him, to know Him, to experience. Him. They had to engage to do that. Here's the problem. Let me just give you an example from my life. Sometime back, I, I visit a local gym. Goodness. Last service, somebody over here laughed out loud big time. While I was there, I did something simple. I checked in. Ken does that. Checks in. I checked in. I was like, I'm up at the gym, and I was talking to somebody. I just checked in while I was there. What people started posting on my social media site was not fair. <laughs> people said things like this, about time. <laughs> Unfriend. <laughs> people said, we're proud of you, Pastor. You can do it. I'm thinking, I can finish this Starbucks frappuccino I'm drinking right now? What, what are you talking about? No, you can do it, Pastor. And then I realized something. I had checked in at the gym. And so they assumed because I had checked in at the gym that I had engaged at the gym. Let me assure you, you do not have anything to worry about when it comes to that. I was already struggling, but I read an article this week that you are safer to walk into a public restroom and just wipe your hands all over everything and you will get less bacteria than when you grab hold of that machine at the gym. My wife said, Don, why are you reading that? She said, it's just another excuse for you not to go. I said, I know, there's no way I'm going now. If you enjoy that, I'm not, I'm not picking on you. I, I know some of my dearest friends love doing that. But here's the problem. Just because I checked in didn't mean I got the benefit. If you just check into God's house, you just check into this faith thing, you are not going to get the benefit. You have to engage in the process. You have to be willing to, to become a part and, and, and in order in our faith. And I, I want you to understand something. When I, I, I'm going to say something a little strange because we're talking about supernatural. I feel the very one that I'm talking to you about right now. I feel him like it's like every, my, I feel him all over me right this moment because I'm trying to introduce you to God who can change your life. And so if you would engage with him more than just checking in, more than just going check, checking off. Woo, that'll preach, won't it? More than church this week. I prayed once this week. Uh, uh, you know, I... I, I did that guy right when I should have run him off the road. Come on now. If you stop checking off and checking in and engaging with the presence of God in your life, what you thought could never happen will happen. The peace that you thought you could never find, you'll find. The joy you thought you'd never run into will begin to fill your soul because that's all a product of you inviting this ghost, this spirit, this presence of God that dwells in the earth today into your life so that God can change who you are. Now, will it make you seem a little strange? Well, most of you won't have to stand up in front of everybody and say, I feel him. But it's worth it. Boy, I was standing there. Mark came and scooted up beside me while I was worshiping. My family came to the early service so she could 
be with her mom today. And, and, and Mark came to And what I was feeling, I was like, Lord, please, please let Mark be feeling what I'm feeling because I want everybody around me to know that you can engage with God. You can hear from God. He wants to guide you. He wants to protect you. And I know what you're thinking now. You thought it was a safe day. It was Mother's Day. You could come to church, and I was going to sit up here and talk about the ABCs, the Mother's Day. Let me just tell you this. We have a gift called the Holy Spirit. And if you will quit, equip a mother with the power of the Spirit, she will be the best mom she can be. As a matter of fact, my mother was filled with the Holy Ghost, and I, I, I think it gave her supersonic mother radar. You think I'm kidding. I'd walk in the house from being somewhere I shouldn't be, and she'd say, Son? Yes, ma'am? She'd say, Anything you talk to me about? <laughs> no, ma'am? <laughs> Son, come on in here right now. I, I'm not kidding. One time, I think I told you all this a few weeks ago, my mom had banned this certain television show, and she said, Matter of fact, you, know, you better not watch that. And I'm telling you, she came walking in the house from prayer meeting, been in the presence of God. She came walking in the house from prayer meeting, and I, I mean, I still remember. She was walking in the house. She was happy, and she got her up here, and also her arm shot out like that toward the TV. She said, boys, you disobeyed me, didn't you? I said, how did you know? <laughs> she said, God told me. I know that's silly, but it happened. Your children need you to connect with the Holy Spirit. They need to know God's talking to you. God interacting with you. As a pastor, it's one of the most important things that I can... I'll never forget one of the days that I, 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 I was driving down the road and this family, this name kept coming to me. This name is just... I just felt my spirit over and over again. I, and so I picked up my cell phone. I, I, I called them right quick and I said, Hey, what's going on? And, and, and they were like, Pastor, well, they're rushing her in right now. I said, Rushing who? Where? And they said, My daughter. They're taking her in for an emergency surgery right this second. That's why you're calling, right? I said, No, I'm calling because the Spirit of God brought you before me. The Spirit of God was speaking to me about you, so I've just been praying for you. Well, they said, that's what you're praying about. Look, it's not something that has to wig you out. See, that's the problem. Most of you think God can talk to somebody else, but He can't talk to you. Let me just be real plain. The gift of the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in your life, the supernatural move of God, is for all who believe in Christ, even those to the end of time, Scripture says, that God wants to interact with you. Pastor Don, what does this have to do with my practical life? Everything. He wants to change who you are. I'm so far out of my sermon, I don't even know which way to go now. Why? Because I'm following the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. You see, the problem is most of us do like that. We want to be in the, we, we don't want to, well, this is way back. We don't want to check in. Come on, amen. We just want to check in and not engage. We become like Luke eleven fifty two 52 that says, you know the keys of knowledge, but you yourself have not entered in. We know what we're supposed to do. We know all the right lingo, but God's calling us to enter in. And what helps us enter in? Acts chapter 2. In the type church that I grew up in, I thought every pastor had to preach on this about every four weeks. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, when the promised day that they were celebrating had fully arrived, they were all with one accord in one place. And here's what I want you to see. They weren't sitting around, just checked in. They were actively pursuing the presence of God. They weren't passively waiting on God. They made up their minds, I'm going to know the promise that God has for me and I'm going to pursue until it gets here. For them, it took about 10 days of prayer, 10 days of crying out, 10 days of seeking God. I wonder what would happen in our lives if we for 10 days just began to consecrate ourselves and said, God, I want you in my world, and I want your promise in my world. I believe the same thing that happened to them might happen to us. God might show up and change who we are and change everybody around us. Amen. Amen. The power of God wants to change our lives. And here's what happened to them as they were seeking Him, as they were wanting His gift, that as, as they believed that God had given them a promise. And I think that's something you have to understand. If you seek, you will find. Verse number 2 says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a, mush, uh, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house they were sitting. One other place in Scripture, one other place that this is described. 
This same thing happened one other place, and it was when Elijah poured the water on the sacrifice, and the Bible describes that the fire came down as a rushing mighty fire consumed everything that was in, uh, in the altar. That's what happens. This I know it's Mother's Day, and I know I'm supposed to behave on Mother's Day. But I just got to tell you, I am sick of these little cartoons showing people with a little big light cuff, cuff top of their head. Look, they're at a concert talking about the Holy Ghost. It, that's not the way it was. It wasn't a bunch of people in the room going, kumbaya, you know what I'm saying? It was, no, the Bible describes a moving force of God that came in and set them all on fire. Literally, they just were, I mean, they were like, "Woo!" something got a hold of them and the fire was all around them and they began to speak in another language as power, as the Spirit gave them the utterance is what verse number four says. God showed up, God changed who they were. Pastor Don, where's our pretty little message for uh, Mother's Day? I don't know. It's somewhere else. But the message God gave me for this church was, you need to have an encounter with the power of God that changes your life. <laughs> Pastor Don, if you keep preaching like this, nobody will want to come to church here. No. If we keep preaching and we create an atmosphere where God can change people's lives, their sons get free from drugs, they'll show up at church. Their daughters get saved, they'll show up at God's house. You allow families to be restored and God will do something in His presence. We need a move of God. But Pastor Don, before I can let God do that for me, I need to know what's that all that stuff they were saying. You know, that's a problem. When I sought the Holy Spirit, I didn't seek for something to say. I sought for more of God. I want more of God. I want to be filled with what God has. And when God showed up, yes, I said something different. Yes, God moved in my life in a way that I had never experienced before. But we get all focused on, well, that, that's crazy, and I don't understand, and that's supernatural. No, the truth is this. What we need to focus on was the Bible says that everyone that heard what they said heard the same thing. In other words, they began to declare one common thing. And what did they begin to declare? Not themselves, not a church, not a denomination, not whether or not we're right and they're wrong. They begin to declare the glory of the risen, crucified, and, and uh, ever-living Christ. And as they declared the gospel, people's lives were changed. The Holy Spirit wants to change you in such a way that the people that know you <laughs> say, I don't know what happened. But something's happened to you, and I want it to. Now look, I, don't you dare tell the first two services that I cut out half the sermon. I'm almost done. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all of you. <laughs> Let me have Acts 2-5 right fast, if you would. I want you to see Acts 2-5. I want you to get this. See, there's a couple questions, and you don't have to throw these up, but uh, go ahead and throw that on up there for me, Acts 2 and 5. Um, what I want you to see is this. The way that you're going to embrace God is not by grabbing God. It's by allowing God to grab you. So the question is not, do you have the Holy Spirit? The question is, does the Holy Spirit have you? When you got saved, the Bible says you cannot receive salvation unless the spirit draws you who seals you you're sealed under the day of redemption by the spirit by the holy spirit you're regenerated by the holy spirit there are all these works in the power of the holy spirit there's six or seven of them that you can find strongly in the bible in other words what it's really saying is you're never going to have all that god wants you to have in the spirit there's all the gifts and the fruit and let me just tell you this the fruit works on the inside of you to make sure that whatever's working outside of you is in line with what god wants are you with me but I want you to watch this right here. And there was dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men. That's where I want to stop, devout men. It means that the people that heard knew the right rituals. They had all the right rituals. Their hair was a certain way. Their clothes were a certain way. They knew when to bow. They knew when to, what to say. They knew when to say amen. Can I get one of those? They knew all the right rituals but they still needed the presence of the Holy Spirit. Rituals can only take you about as far as seven days. 
Because then you have to have your fix. You have to have your fix. And you have to have your fix. And you have to have your fix. They had all the right rituals, but they lacked the power thereof. Now, we can make fun of them all we want or give them a hard time, but I, I dare say we have our own rituals here. It goes sort of like this. We get here. As somebody told me this week, they said, I get there way early because I want a specific parking spot. I commend them. They come on in, you get your parking spot, you come to the door, somebody greets you, you find your seat, you check your children, whatever your process looks like that, but about five minutes before, a little countdown comes on the clock. Some of you go, really? I've never been here that early. <laughs> Let the Holy Ghost just deal with your heart right now. <laughs> We're just glad you're here. It starts counting down in about, what, what time does the lights go out? What point on that clock? Is it three? About three minutes left, the lights go dark. Gives everybody a signal to come back to their seats. Everybody fi starts finding their seats. And then everybody... At one minute, the worship team walks to the stage. Everything stops. Paul flips his hair. <laughs> oh. And then here we go. They sing in this service four songs. Unless the Holy Spirit leads and we come up and sing another. But they sing four songs. And then, after they sung four songs, our wonderful... Excellent job, campus pastor. <laughs> Who today's his birthday? Comes right into the stage. And if they sing that one song, he is fired up. They take the offering. We shake hands, they take the offering, and then they tell me that about every time I walk up the stage, they'll say, come on. I don't know why. But apparently I've done that for about 30, 26 years. I come up, I bring you a message. Toward the end of the message, I make this statement. As the curtain parts, I say, now in closing. And now in closing. <laughs> a melody begins behind me. Somebody said, why don't you play the whole time? I said, it's hard enough to keep them awake as it is. And then I begin to bring it home. And then I have you stand, don't you? But I have you stand, and then we bow our heads, and then people get saved. It's the way it works. You connect with a message. Good or bad, that's our ritual. But ever so often, it's like he takes our ritual and says, do another song. Say it this way. Abandon your notes and just talk from your heart. He starts invading our space. And when he starts invading our space, it starts changing everything about us. And as he starts changing the environment, it becomes ripe for the supernatural, life-giving change that only Christ can bring. That's what we want. But we don't only want it in service, we want it in your life. So that he messes up all your plans. And he fixes your life in a way that you could never have dreamed it could be done above and beyond anything you could ask, think, or imagine. Let me bring this back to Mother's Day and we'll close. Since we're already closing. You need the Holy Spirit it's the only hope we have in a dark world. I'll never forget the day, and if you've been here a long time, you've heard this story before, but I thought about this today when Jordan was standing over here singing earlier. I'll never forget this day in my, my whole life. My children are probably two and a half, four, six. Where we live, there's a tall hill there's only one flat little place to park and so when our children wanted to ride their bikes we had to back our cars down and, and the kids could then ride in the flat area bethany would come running in the house that sunny summer day and said mommy i want to ride my bike will you move the cars christina said i will go ahead and get your helmet and your bike and so bethany and zach were getting their helmets and bikes 
as Christina grabs her keys and goes out through our mudroom, as she goes out outside, Jordan brushes past her, headed to her room. So Beth, Beth, Christina makes a mental note. Jordan's there. Bethany, Zach, you know how it is, moms. She jumps in the car, and as soon as she hits the car, the Spirit of the Lord speaks to her. Says, where's Jordan? She said, okay, Jordan's in a room, Bethany, Zach. She puts the key in the ignition, turns it on. The Spirit of the Lord speaks to her again and says, where's Jordan? She said, Lord, she's in a room. She puts her foot on the brake, engages the transmission, and as she does, the Spirit of the Lord says into her in an urgent tone, where's Jordan? You ever get frustrated with God? Christina just tells the story like this. She says, I was like, okay, God, rolls down her window and just says, I'll check, and goes, Jordan! And my little tiny daughter, with her curly hair, she leans around the back tire of the van and says, here I am, Mommy. Without the voice of the Holy Spirit, my life would have changed forever. Without the voice of the Holy Spirit guiding you, you will never have the confidence and peace that he can bring into your family. Look, if you're worried about what people are going to think about you, you should have given up a long time ago. But if you want all that God has for you, it's yours for the taking. Scripture says this gift of the Holy Spirit is for all who are in Christ and those even who are far off. It is for all of us. Stand with me today. He's here. He is real. And he is able. Bow your heads with me in this place. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Don, I want more of the presence of God in my life. I want more of the Holy Spirit in my life. Can I see your hand if that's you? Some of your hands were already in the air. Just hold those up for a moment. Father, you see our hands today. Being someone who knows what the power of your Spirit is, even I declare I must have more of you. I didn't do this in any other service, but I want you to pray this with me. Pray this with me. Father, give me more. Give me more. Lord, that's our heart's cry today, and I ask you, give us more. More of you, more of your presence, so that the supernatural, that the miracles pale in comparison to the super awesome God that has invaded our lives. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Put those hands down, keep your heads bowed for just a moment. You see, that verse kind of makes sense to some, of it, some others of you in a different way. It's not only saying this gift is for everyone who will ever love Jesus, but it's saying this gift is for those who are far off. Some of you know that God's nowhere near in your life. It's like he's afar off from you. You've never completely surrendered your life to Christ. And I want everyone that's in this room to hear me now. I believe that God ordained every one of you that are here, every one of you that are watching, every one of you that are listening right now. God ordained this moment for you. I've been talking about a God that wants you to know him in a personal way. He wants to touch you right where you are. If you're here today or in one of those other places, maybe online today, but if you're here and you'd say, Pastor, I need the gift of the Holy Spirit, but I know before I can have Him, I need to surrender my life to Jesus Christ as my Savior. I need to know God personally. Maybe you prayed that prayer when you were a child, but you know that God's had no part in your life. You know that the way you've been living, God's not been present. Or maybe this is your very first time. Five people have made that decision in the last service today. Today, in this service, God's going to change lives. I'm believing right now in God dealing with your heart right where you are if that's you today i'm not going to embarrass you i didn't embarrass anyone else that raised their hand a moment ago i'm going to pray with you as simply as i prayed with them but if that's you and you say today you want to give your life to christ can i see your hand right where you are would you hold it up high thank you thank you 
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's about five or six that have raised their hand. Are there others? Thank you. Put those down. Join hands with someone near you if there's somebody nearby you. This is what we do here at this church. We believe that someone prayed this prayer with us, so we're going to pray it with you. The Bible says, not me, but the Bible says that if we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, that we would be born again. And so today we're going to pray a prayer confessing that Jesus is alive and he is our Savior. Let's pray that together today. Jesus, by faith, I believe your promises. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. You see my past, my present, and my future. I repent of my sins. I leave them behind. And now by faith, I believe Jesus came for me. He died for me. He now lives for me. From this moment forward, I am forgiven. God is my Father. Heaven is my home. And Jesus is my Savior. Amen and amen. Would you give the Lord a praise today? Amen.